Today I'm going to be doing a try-on first impression review of the Rare Beauty Liquid Touch Weightless Foundation. I have it in the shade 160C. This retails for $30 and I got this in the February 2023 BoxyCharm Base Box. I am 56 years old, have mature dry skin. On the website it claims that this foundation is best for normal and combination skin but it says that if you have dry skin be sure to prep your skin with a hydrating moisturizer and that is what I have done this is what the foundation looks like um, 160c I have a feeling is maybe a hair too dark I'm gonna do some swatches so you can see what shade 160c looks like compared to some other foundations that I wear and look good on my skin tone. All right, the first swatch is from L'Oreal. It is a True Match Nude in the shade 0.5-2. Next over, also from L'Oreal, we have the Infallible 24-Hour Fresh Wear in the shade 415. Third, we have from Revolution, the Conceal and Hydrate in the shade F3. And last is the foundation we'll be reviewing today, which is from Rare Beauty, and it's the Liquid Touch Weightless Foundation in 160C. This is claimed to be a cool-toned um, foundation. Goodness, my lights are really washing that out. I'm wearing mascara, and I've already applied my concealer, but I don't have anything on my face other than skincare. The packaging is really nice. This is, I don't think it's glass. It seems maybe glass, but I believe it's just a really nice thick acrylic. And then you have the ball top. And when you open it, there is no pump. Instead, you get an extremely large doe foot. I'm gonna use a brush on one side of my face and a damp sponge on the other. That way, depending on how you prefer to apply your foundation, you can see if it actually works better with a sponge or a brush or if it really doesn't matter. The only problem with this type of applicator is you don't get enough product on one dip, so you have to go in a couple times and then that forces air to go in. So I don't know if that will make it not last as long as if you if, as if it had like a pump and you could like squirt out enough product to do your entire face on the other hand a doe foot makes for less mess and you can apply it directly where you need it this brush is from a brand called Fayon. i believe i got this off of amazon don't quote me um, it's just like a flat top kabuki, a little extra dense compared to other brushes. So we're just going to tap it on instead of drag. If you drag with a brush, you're going to end up with brush strokes. If you kind of pounce and push it into the skin, you will end up with a much better finish. Oftentimes, I will even when I use a brush, I will follow up with a damp sponge just to really press it into the skin and if you did have any brush strokes it would help to get rid of them all right so far so good make sure you bring your foundations down the side of your neck that way it blends and you don't have that line indicating where your foundation stopped and your regular skin tone starts also, get a little bit on your ear so there isn't a coloration change there. All right, let's do a close-up. Feels nice. Went on beautifully. Doesn't feel dry or tacky. Feels quite soft and not heavy. When I say feel, like, I don't feel anything, so... All right, let's give it a try on the other side of the face with a dampened sponge. So Rare Beauty claims that this is a weightless, smooth glide formula, which dries to a natural skin-like finish 
and comes in 48 shades. Pure pigments are placed in a super fluid serum-like base, making it easier than ever to blend and build your coverage just how you like it. I believe this sponge is from Shop Miss A. Don't quote me on that. I really enjoy it and I have had it for quite some time. It says it's best to shake well before use to make sure the pigments are evenly dispersed throughout. Uh, I forgot to do that. <laughs> um, the foundation has concentrated pigments, so less really is more. Add a second layer only when needed. Now, when I use a sponge to apply foundation, which for me is usually nine out of 10 times, I like to pounce. I just will sit here forever, which in a video is not fun. So I'll be right back. All right, let's do a close up and see if we can notice any difference between applying with a sponge versus a brush. In person, I'm not really seeing a difference. It looks a little more dewy, slightly more glowy on this side, just ever so slightly seeing, I don't want to say texture, but I think it's just because it was a sponge. I bet if I took my sponge and pounced over here, what I'm seeing could be because it was a brush. Um, I'm going to leave it as is just so we could get a true visual of how a brush performs versus a sponge. But if I were just wearing this, I would definitely take my sponge and just pounce everything out. All right, let's see. I don't think I need any more coverage. However, I am gonna apply a little more just so for this review to see how well it builds. I would say this is a strong medium, as they claim. I have hyperpigmentation, which is, I can see it because I, I know to look for it or I know where it is, um, but this did a fantastic job and it's the type of coverage I prefer on my day-to-day -day life, a good, strong medium. I must say, even though I like the convenience and laziness of a doe foot, I don't like that you have to dip it in three, four, five times to get the amount of product needed on your face. All right, let's see how well this builds or if I'm gonna regret doing this. Honestly, I, I didn't need to do this. I just wanna see how well it will build up. And I'll be very curious on the other side of my face where I do have hyperpigmentation to see if that is going to do a good job of actually pushing into low full to see if it will cover my hyperpigmentation. Although since this side is using a sponge, usually sponges absorb a little bit of the product um, and you don't always get the exact same coverage you do with a brush, but sometimes you do, really depends on the formula. And I must say, Adding that extra bit did cover my hyperpigmentation. So I would say if you go in with a second coat, this has moved up. It's not full, full coverage, but it's higher than medium. I would say it's a good, either you want to call it an extreme medium or a low, full, however you want to consider that, but it is definitely buildable. All right, so... I'm going to go off camera, put on the rest of my makeup, film a couple other videos, and then I'm going to come back and give my final thoughts. That will give this foundation time to settle in and let me know if anything happens, if there's any creasing, if it starts to feel dry or cakey. Just giving it time will help with my first impression review. I don't have time to do a full 8, 10, 12 hour review. But in an hour or so, I should be able to give you a good first impression. All right, I am back, full face of makeup. Yes, my hair clip is still in because I wanna be able to zoom in and let you take a look at my forehead. Um, I do have wrinkles. I 
make weird faces all the time. But I don't know if I'll pick up because my lights are so bright. Maybe I use too much, but it seems a lot heavier, cakier on my forehead in this region than it does on my cheeks and the rest of my face. Um, could have been user error, could have put way too much product, but I did want to point that out. All right, let me take this out and then I will talk about the product and how I feel and how it looks on the rest of my face. So I definitely think for me, it looks better on the side where I use the sponge versus the brush, just slightly. But I, in real life, staring in my mirror can see a difference. It looks a little more dry over here and textured, not textured, like the crepiness, I can see it more like right here, whereas here it's pretty smooth. Now, I have a smile line right here, which is a little extra. I don't know, it's, I'm noticing it more than I do with some of my, the other foundations I use, but it's not horrible. I must say, I don't feel the foundation, so it's very comfortable. Is it? It's a little, not tacky. Um, actually, let me grab a white tissue and let's see. No, it doesn't. I'm very curious about my forehead though. Okay, so it doesn't seem to be transferring maybe ever so slightly. Like if you were wearing a mask all day long, I bet there would be some transfer, but not bad, not bad at all. Will this become my holy grail? Too soon to tell, but first impressions, um, I'm going to say no. Will I still use it? Yes. Is it the best shade match for me? It's a smidge too dark, just like if you want the perfect shade. Um, very wearable. I have no problem wearing this. I definitely will go lighter hand, um, but now I'm curious what you think. Have you tried this foundation before? What are your thoughts? Also, if you have tried it and you liked it, do you have dry skin like I do or do you have normal to combination? If you've tried it and you didn't like it, let me know why. Again, it's only been on my face for about two hours, which isn't the longest period of time, but it's enough for me to know if it's something I would use again. Trust me, I've done some uh, foundation reviews where after like 10 minutes, I wanted it off my face. So, so far, so good. All right, I wanna thank each and every one of you for stopping by. I really do appreciate it. If you haven't done so by now, I would love if you would subscribe. For those who have, thank you so much. Remember to click that bell icon so you can be notified of future videos. And if you could do me a huge favor, if you would click that thumbs up, it really does help with my channel to grow. All right, thanks everyone.